the 2015 NFL Draft is officially open. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock. There be a discussion for the first overall pick, not within those walls about who it is, but with a team that's phoning in from outside those walls to offer a king's ransom for the ability to come up and choose someone number o number one overall. We are assuming, though, it will be Jameis Winston. You have the floor on this young man, Mike Mayock. Yeah, and it's very rare, as, as Coach Shaw knows, to see a pro-style quarterback come out of a college-style offense. The world's changed, and what we have with Jameis Winston is a prototypical big-arm drop-back quarterback with an ability to come out of a scheme and perform day one. Now watch, throws with anticipation and timing. In between two linebackers through to the open window. You don't see that often in college football. Third and 21. Watch him subtly slide to his left. Extends the play. Picks up 22 on third and 21. Now, ball security has been an issue. Front side pressure. He doesn't see it or feel it. Ball's held low. He loses it against Oregon. 18 interceptions. Unfortunately, this was fairly typical. He's going to drop back. His eyes are going to take you to the ball. Free safety robs him over the top. So from my perspective, big time player, all kinds of ability. I just want to see him clean it up. <laughs> With the first pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jameis Winston, quarterback, Florida State. So after all that has been said and done and tape grinded and questions about character and on-field acumen and what this young man really thinks about living life and is he really ready for the crucible that the National Football League presents to any athlete, let alone the first overall selection in a draft, it has been done. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have selected Jameis Winston, number one overall in the 2015 draft. And I really think that certain people embrace the competition and the challenge, and I think he's one of those kinds of athletes. He will not shy away from the bright lights of Tampa. At Florida State, and I liken him to another guy, and I know Mike talks about the interceptions he threw. Well, Matt Ryan threw 19 interceptions his last year in college, but I like the way they play inside the pocket. Their classic drop back passers can manipulate the pocket and great second level throwers, which I believe is what makes quarterbacks great at the National Football League level. You see Jameis there making that second level throw. You watch Matt Ryan here. Great balance in the pocket, great anticipation, able to let the ball go and put it in between defenders. So uh, I liken him to a Matt Ryan coming out of college and, and really like this pick. I think he's going to help Tampa Bay right away. Rich, back to you. And the hat is already on the head of Jameis Winston in his home in Alabama where he is with his whole family. So it's not going to be a very long trip for him to hop on Air Glazer and go to work uh, in Tampa. And we will hear from Jameis Winston shortly. While the Tampa uh, Bay Buccaneers have made their pick, we are almost halfway through with the amount of time the Titans have left on the clock to choose uh, in Tennessee right now. I think they've been inundated with phone calls for the last several days. I think the logical phone callers have been the New York Jets at six, Chicago at seven. We all know that Chip Kelly's trying to get there in any crazy way he can from 20. But from my perspective, if I was the new head coach and general manager of the New York Jets, I would be all over this opportunity. I've got a pretty good defense. I need an offensive player, and I would be trying to get up and go get Marcus Mariota to be the quarterback of the Jets. And there he is at his party in Honolulu, Hawaii, waiting to hear. No phone pressed to his ear, so his future will be decided in the next four plus minutes, whether it's at Nashville or some other spot on the NFL. There's no question. And, and this guy's got all the skills, he's got all the ability. When you watch the film, he can make every throw. He's an athletic guy, he's a great leader. He's not a vocal leader, he's a great leader. The guy makes plays in every game. Every game you watch, you see something that makes you say, wow. It's not good, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and I think he can do it. Great upside, best athlete in the, as a quarterback in this draft. 
you know you talk about the Jets they have two quarterbacks that can play right now Geno Smith and Ryan Fitzpatrick maybe they have to trade one of those guys because Tennessee needs a quarterback in this next day or two. So uh, what do we think real quickly what are the Titans doing. I just don't think you can pass up a potential franchise quarterback and, and that's what Marcus Mariota is and I don't think that Tennessee has anything on their roster right now that resembles this kid. You have to go with them if you're whiz. I have to agree Marshall if you believe this guy is a franchise quarterback and you're sitting at the number two spot these things don't come around very often so you have to make this move with Marcus Mariota even though you may not feel like you have all the pieces around him it's a great piece to start with and build and I think coach Wisenhut would do a great job if they choose it. with the second pick in the 2015 NFL draft the Tennessee Titans select Marcus Mariota quarterback Oregon and it is Marcus Mariota in Hawaii. <laughs> this will be potentially the longest private flight taken by any number two overall pick. The Eagles draft fans at the draft party. The Titans fans are all excited. <laughs> the Eagles fans are they don't know what to think. Now maybe you could put the Sam Bradford jerseys up for sale now. Not yet. You, <laughs> you shouldn't put you shouldn't go buy your <laughs> Sam Bradford jersey yet. What about all the Cleveland moments? <laughs> My gosh. So there's the young man the reigning Heisman Trophy winner is going to Tennessee all the way from Honolulu from from Hawaii to Nashville. Uh, Mark, first thing that jumps out with Marcus Mariota is his athleticism. Think Colin Kaepernick. We're going to look at a tape right now that will show exactly what he can and can't do. Colin Kaepernick athletic ability just jumps out ran four five. Very long lead great athlete. Now here's a pump bubble screen and he's going to throw back shoulder in the corner of the end zone. That is a beautifully thrown football away from the inside corner and inside the sideline. Now every once in a while he misses a wide open throw and about once or twice a game that happens. This is what he's going to have to learn right here. Vision to the right. He's trying to come back to another progression. He doesn't see the hang linebacker in the window and that's going to be the difficult thing more and more of those throws. Kurt Warner your thoughts. Well I, I agree with Mike. I think there's so much to like about Marcus Mariota that the athleticism obviously jumps off the page like Mike said. Uh, I think he's got all the tangibles. He can throw the ball down the field. He can be accurate with it. He's very efficient with the football. Doesn't make mistakes. The biggest question right now is just how long will it take for him to transition into a new system and into a pro system. Here's the commissioner with the Jaguars pick. With the third pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Dante Fowler Jr., defensive end, Florida. So the Gator doesn't have to go very far to play his professional football. He's going to take his gold shoes and head to Jacksonville. Hey, Rich. George Clinton just called me. He wants his 1970s suit back. Nicely played. <laughs> Mike Mayock. Rocking the Funkadelic reference right there. Once in there, two times that they face him. Let's enjoy the moment. Our first in Chicago prospect on the stage for the commissioner. Well, this is the most gifted edge rusher in the class. And, and coach, the thing I really like about him is he's not just one of those 228 pound edge guys. He's 261 pounds. He's got a freaky first step. And he also sets a physical edge in the run game. He gets off the ball. He creates havoc. He gets in the backfield and he knocks people around. And you also love the way he plays the game. This guy loves football. He plays with energy. He plays with excitement. He's jumping around. Guys are jumping on his head. This is a guy you'd love to bring into your building. You mentioned it. When you watch the tape, yep. you know, you go, I want to watch more. This guy is unbelievable. He's on the right side, the left side. He's standing up, his hands on the ground, and he's got a motor that won't quit. And he's an exciting guy. Gus Bradley wants a guy that's yep. going to sack the quarterback. He wants pressure with a four-man rush. 
and he's going to get a lot of that with this young guy right here, Fowler. Daniel Jeremiah, take it away. Oh, this is a guy that I love watching on tape. I agree with you guys at the desk. And a player he reminds me of is Ryan Kerrigan, who's had a lot of success with the Washington Redskins. 13 and a half sacks last year. You look at guys with heavy, heavy hands and guys that play with a phenomenal effort. Fowler plays as hard as anybody in this draft class. He's explosive. He's physical. I love the way he plays the game. And they need somebody like this in Jacksonville because not only are you going to have to chase Andrew Luck, he's going to have to chase the guy who went one pick ahead of him. So that means that the Raiders pick is in perhaps a young man who grew up a Raider fan. This could be where Leonard Williams goes. That This would be sort of a dream come true for him to put on the silver this and black. This is a jump ball between Leonard Williams and the two top wide receivers in the draft. It could be Amari Cooper. It could be Kevin White. I would actually prefer they go after a wide receiver with this pick. I think Derek Carr probably would concur. Exactly. All right, you're talking about Kevin White, who is the freak of an athlete with great speed. Maybe an Al Davis would certainly grab a guy like that, right? Oh, yeah. But all of a sudden, you got Amari Cooper, who's very pro-ready, can play X, Y, or Z, or in the slot. But then, like you mentioned, Leonard Williams, who grew up, for some reason, a Raider fan. Boy, they would be very happy to have a guy like that. With the fourth pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Amari Cooper, wide receiver, Alabama. So it's Amari Cooper going out to catch passes from Derek Carr offensively, which means Leonard Williams is available for D.C. to select. What do you make of the Cooper pick? The first wideout is... Amari Cooper from Alabama. Yeah, I, I put him with Oakland because I thought he fit here better than Kevin White. The reason I think he fits better is he can play inside and outside. And Oakland has almost all outside receivers on their roster right now. With the fifth pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Brandon Scherf. Tackle, Iowa. How about that? They went all line, Mike. How about that? Now, the beauty is Washington has been looking for a right tackle. They've got Tom Compton, 319 pounds. He's an interior brawler. Look at him finish, top of your screen. Again, left tackle. Can he get out on the second level? Nice wall off on the second level. And again, at left tackle. I love the way the kid plays the game. Up to the second level. Look at the fit on the second level linebacker. Made an easy cut for the running back. And finally, pass pro, easy punch. He can play anywhere up and down the line of scrimmage. And I'll tell you one thing about Scott McClellan, the new general manager. He wants to get this team bigger and more physical. Well, he certainly does with this right here. This guy can play all over the place, maybe for center. So you plug him in anywhere you want and this guy starts for 12 years and you made a good example over there with the way Dallas has been building up their football team with the offensive line first and this guy's going to afford RG3 a little bit more protection uh, and Leonard Williams is sitting there Mike they probably couldn't have even imagined that that would be possible right? the irony though is they don't need, need a five him. technique they've right. got Shelton Richardson and Muhammad Wilkerson two young pro bowl five techniques so Will they trade down right here with somebody that wants to come get Leonard Will? And if they sit there and don't take him, Chicago in the first draft wow. in 50 some years might get the best player in the draft at number seven. Yeah, and look at those guys because, uh, you know, if you don't take a, a guy like Leonard Williams because you have those people. You have corners signed in free agency. You know, Todd Bowles, you know, does he need a wide receiver for those guys to throw the ball to? Is it a Kevin White or is it the best guy out on the edge, Mike, yep. that can come and pressure yep. and, and make a good defense great uh, with an edge rusher? Here. And they've taken two, two free agent wide receivers in the last two years. That's right. You, you, you stay with the quarterback. It's hard to pass on Little Williams here for me. It's still hard. He's the best player in the draft. Yep. And you can't pass up difference makers on the defensive line. I, we're going sort of chalk so far in it's, terms it's of the Leonard draft Williams, order here. Bud Dupree, Vic Beasley, or Kevin White. I'm probably wrong, and I took four shots at it. But <laughs> With the sixth pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Leonard Williams. Defensive end, USC. So they 
quote unquote, it's not a need, but it's the best player available. And Co Coach hit it right on the, right on target. Best player in the draft, regardless of position, you got to take him, right? There's no question about it. This guy creates havoc inside. He played against us at about 80 percent, and there were about five plays that USC had to have, and the guy turned it on. And he made it. He played hurt. He's physical. This kid, the sky is the limit. Let's take a peek at him as a football player at USC. First and foremost, for a defensive tackle, you've got to be stout against the run. Here's the bear hug. Commissioner. I guess that's two New Yorkers on the stage now. Look at this kid at USC. Number one, he's stout versus the run. He's just going to bench press the right tackle, make the play. Athletic as can be, he's going to read, shed, and get to the football. That, that's textbook right there. How about a pass rush? Up and under with a swim move, now flat to the quarterback. You can't do that at 305 pounds. And again, a little push-pull, and again to the quarterback. David Shaw, you're just shaking your head. There, there's a word that we, we say for guys like him. It's called home wrecker. Yeah. This guy wrecks your day, play after play. Yeah, he's a freak, and the New York Jets are going to love him. Yeah, and when you think about this guy, and I look at a player comparison, I'm going to go real old school here, guys. I go back to Merlin Olsen. When you think about what he did with the Rams and his ability to play up and down the defensive line, whether he's a tackle, moved outside a little bit, his ability to play against all styles, all teams, play the run, play the pass. That's what I thought of when I watched Leonard Williams play. As Mike Mayock loves to say, he's scheme diverse. Uh, Kurt Warner, what do you think the Bears are going to do here at seven? Well, man, 30th ranked defense, so I think everything points to, and you need to sure up that defense. But I tell you what, with a guy like Kevin White, sitting there at wide receiver you lost Brandon Marshall I wouldn't be surprised if they went and got Jay Cutler a, a big time receiver on the outside Michael yeah and, and this guy can get up the field and add him with Ashawn Jeffrey who can go everywhere and catch a football it would be a great great connection him with Alshon. the history of the Bears is all about defense they have to go defense here yeah we're talking about uh, bottom half statistically in the league defensively on that side of the ball 30th overall by the way they have not drafted a skill player on offense since they took a tight end named Greg Olson who now plays down in Carolina that was back in 2007 with the seventh pick in the 2015 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select Kevin White wide receiver West Virginia. <laughs> so despite the Bears defense falling on hard times in recent years, it is a new weapon in this pass happy league, quarterback driven league for Jay Cutler. And there is Kevin White from West Virginia who had a breakout senior season. Over 1,400 yards and 10 touchdowns from a young man who's been taking a lot of advice from Larry Fitzgerald in recent days. And here he is against Alabama. This was his coming out party. Uses that inside arm. Now he stacks the corner and tremendous concentration and ability to finish at the end of the play. Now watch him win off his release. Right there, inside stem. He stacks the corner again. He ran four, three, five at the combine. And when he has the ball in his hands, this kid's exciting with the run after the catch. He's a big, nasty, tough runner he's a natural hand snatcher Jay Cutler is gonna love this even around a lot of competition a lot of people and I love that <laughs> like Larry Fitzgerald snatching the ball out of the air but this kid has something special that Larry Fitzgerald just was not blessed with he can have he has speed and boy he could turn into a Julio Jones so here we are in Chicago and the newest bear already playing to the crowd. The Windy City comes alive, Rich. Here's the commissioner with the Giants on the clock. This is the Falcons pick. With the eighth pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Vic Beasley. Wow. Defensive end, Clemson. Now, he's easily the best athlete of the edge guys. 
He came to the combine at 246 pounds. Bench press 225, 37 times. Ran faster than anybody else. Jumped 42 inches. His first step is outstanding. And Mooch, as you said, I think what he is day one is a situational pass rusher while he learns to set an edge. And there's nothing wrong with that. You remember when Alden Smith came exactly into the league, right. he couldn't start in their base 3-4, but what did he do? Sack the quarterback 19 times right. or whatever it was. So this guy can get there. He reminded me a lot of Dante Fowler when I was watching him on film. Very active, high motor. The Atlanta Falcons. The Giants on the clock no more. Their pick is in. The Rams now on the clock. As we have a, uh, a trio of teams based nearby and driving distance away from Chicago with the Rams, Vikings, and Browns, their first of two picks. Well, I, I assumed that Brandon Sheriff was going to be their guy if he was available. Obviously not available. Washington took him at number five. I think the logical pick here is Trey Waynes, the corner from Michigan State. Prince of Mukamara is in a contract year. He has not shown any kind of consistent durability and Trey Waynes is a plug and play press corner. That'd be a great pick too. I thought maybe a linebacker or an offensive lineman. They wanted Sheriff, I thought. Here he's gone. I thought maybe they'd take your guy, Andre Speed. That could happen. There's a lot of really good tackles on the board right now. And, and you want to protect. When this quarterback has weapons, which when they're healthy, when this quarterback has protection, he wins Super Bowls. Exactly right. That's what happens up yep. in New York, so I, I wouldn't be surprised with a tackle here. So the Giants, you think Trey Waynes is going to be the pick here, well, essentially? I think he's logical. I think an edge rusher is logical. Somebody that can line up a young, a young guy with talent across from uh, JPP. So Bud Dupree could be a play here also. Yeah, and I like watching that Finding Giants. That's a heck of a show on our yes, network, yes. right? With the ninth pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Eric Flowers. Tackle Miami. That is a big, strong, powerful man. Six foot six, 329 pounds. I'm not sure he's 21 years old either. Three years removed from high school. Powerful run blocker. He's got prototypical right tackle traits. And he reminded me of Anthony Davis when he came out of Rutgers. So take a look, he played the left side for Miami. His feet aren't quite as good to play on the left side, but his size and his length is outstanding. Picks up a little rub from his guard. Re-anchors his feet. I thought he poured, played one poor game against Virginia. Look at him finish the run block there. Eli Harold from Virginia played him pretty well. But outside of that, here he comes again. Cut off on the back side of his own. He's big, strong, long, and powerful. He's the first member of the U to be chosen in the first round since the Giants took Kenny Phillips back in 2008. Here is the commissioner. Let's listen in. You ready? With the 10th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the St. Louis Rams select Todd Gurley, running back, Georgia. There you go, Marshall Falk. We have a running back in the first round, and he's coming off a torn ACL at that. And when you think about what he is and what he brings to the table, I mean, he's a very physical runner, a guy that, um, whether it's inside or outside, uh, a guy that can, he's a game breaker. I mean, the guy ran track on the U.S. national team, and, and I mean, a couple of years ago, and and I think he's a, a, a rich man's LeGarrette Blunt. I mean, a, a very rich man. Yeah, he's about to be very rich man. Listen, the guy, the guy can break tackles, he runs physical inside, and he can hit the long run ball. He's very, he's sneaky fast and LeGarrette Blunt for a big guy to have the feet that he has and the hips that he has. And, and yes, he can jump over you, he can run around you, and he can run over you. He's the total package. And yes, he is a rich man's version of LeGarrette Blunt, a very, very talented running back. And I love the pick too. When you look at the NFC West and the defenses that you're going to be playing there, you need that physicality, kind of like beast mode, to be able to match some of those defenses. So I like this pick for St. Louis. Coach Fisher, Coach Fisher has watched 
Uh, Marshawn Lynch, he has watched Frank Gore in that same division give great work to their football team. He's looking for Gurley to give that same great work to the Rams. So the 10th overall pick, Todd Gurley out of the University of Georgia between the hedges, and they are loving it at the draft party in St. Louis, Missouri. They want to win games the same way Seattle and San Francisco has in their division. Play great defense, run the football, and play special teams. This kid takes away angles. Talked about him being a track star. Olympic type, Olympic type speed. He gets skinny in the hole and watch him come out the other end. Bang. Runs through arm tackles and again takes away tackles. Take, takes away angles. Toss sweep. Same play, now the cutback. Foot in the ground, break through a tackle, it's all over. How about an added dimension, guys? Kickoff returner with outstanding speed. At this point, he's gone. Gone. All four of those plays we showed you were touchdowns. And I love this pick for St. Louis because they already have a solid defense. It's about to come. What do you think the uh, name is going to come from the podium, Mike? I think they're looking for playmakers. Top corner on the board, the top wide receiver on the board versus the top edge rusher on their board. Devontae Parker say, Rashad Perryman. Parker and Bridgewater were college teammates. So there's some synchronicity there. Sure. Synchronicity. I that's saw a, you getting a little bored. That's Gucci. a good one. You got Trey Waynes over there. That's a possibility yeah. to play a crosser from yep. Xavier Rhodes, right? And then you've got Devontae Parker, who certainly would make Teddy happy. But they could use some offensive line help, too. Mike Zimmer's a defensive guy, and he wants to have a great defense to stop that guy named Aaron Rodgers do, and do, Matthew Stafford do, in that division. Do you know what Mike Zimmer did last year? What? The year before he got there, they were last in the league at points allowed, 30. Last year, with not much change in the roster, they were number 11 in the league. They dropped nine points per game by Mike Zimmer coming over and implementing his system. A heck of a football coach. Here's the commissioner with the Vikings pick here in Chicago. With the 11th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Trey Waynes, defensive back, Michigan State. Six feet, 188 pounds, long arms. If you're looking for a press corner, and trust me, Mike Zimmer loves his corners. Mike's one of the best corner coaches I've ever seen. Mike Zimmer is. He loves corners. So, And he joins a Minnesota Vikings team that, you know, look. If this kid's as advertised, and he's very comfortable in press. You see him here against Kenny Bell in Nebraska. He's just toying with him, hip to hip, gets his eyes around, finds the football. That's textbook. Who is it? Again, now I like the zone eyes. Falls off the inside, sees the ball thrown behind him, another pick. So not only can he press, but he's zone aware. And if you play defense for Michigan State, you're well coached. You tackle, you play hard. I think sometimes when he's off, he loses interest, though. He's a, he loves press. He gets up too high occasionally like he did right there. And some of those long corners are a little stiff, David. I tell you what, though, this kid, when you watch him, you said the word to me, the word is comfortable. He's so fast, he's not worried about anybody running by him. He's comfortable. He reminds me so much of Richard Sherman. Long, lean, comfortable, he's physical. He'll come up and hit you in the face. He doesn't care. He loves the game of football, but he can play the ball in the air. We, may, we got by him in the, in, the Super, in the Rose Bowl a couple years ago. About half a quarter later, he came back and got us. You can't outrun this guy. He's, he's blazingly fast. Charles Davis, Daniel Jeremiah, your thoughts? What I think we like most about him is his ability to play man coverage. We heard you guys talk about how comfortable he is in doing it. When you take a good look at his comparison, I said Darquez Denard, his former teammate at Michigan State. Why? Because they're schooled the same way. Press man coverage, guys, and when they do play off, they're not playing shuffle, shuffle, bail. They're playing regular man coverage, locking up with receivers, very aggressive in everything they do, DJ. Yeah, you can use them as a press man corner, and we've always said in draft rooms, you're going to have a great defense. Your corner's got to be able to tackle, too. Let's not forget about that aspect of it. He is a very physical run support player as well. I think he's a complete corner. With the 12th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Danny Shelton. Yeah, baby. Defensive tackle, Washington. 
You love this kid, right, Coach Shaw? Absolutely. I, I had a feeling, knowing Coach Pett in that 3-4 scheme, you got to have a nose. This guy is a big physical human being. I mean, he is a, he's an athlete. You rarely see a guy that's 300 and 39. Yeah, yeah, today. By the time they play, this could be 350. You don't know, but at his size, he'll flip his hips and make him play 15 yards down the field. The hug to the commissioner and get that Cleveland Browns jersey. Again, we are now 12 picks into this draft and not a single trade. And the uh, Cleveland Browns were supposed to be oh, trade happy. Oh, <laughs> there's the bear hug. We might lose him. <laughs> that was the first ever commissioner <laughs> lift, I believe. You wearing a skirt? That's a lava lava. <laughs> Fantastic. Danny Shelton going to the Cleveland Browns. With the commissioner about a foot off the ground. Fight through a double team. Plays with leverage, sheds and gets to the ball carrier. He's so quick in short areas. Look at him destroy the blocker, find the football. He has outstanding vision. And finally, one-on-one -on -one against the right guard. Bull rush, now he's gonna walk him right back into the pocket. Eyes on the quarterback. I'm amazed how a guy that big has vision and instincts the way he does. And a, and a guy that should be a run stopper. He likes to play two gap because he's 34 on the bench, but he had nine sacks this year as a pass rusher. The New Orleans Saints select Andres Pete. Tackle Stanford. Coach, your guy's a Saint. Nice to see a Stanford Cardinal go this early. I'll tell you what, I had a good conversation with Sean Payton. I've been biting my lip all morning. <laughs> you know, this, this guy, for what they do, he knows their terminology right now. We have very similar terminology. This guy's going to be great. Um, as we say about him, he's not even shaving right now. He's, he's, he's a big puppy. He's going to grow. He's going to be 320 pounds. He's a great athlete. He's a great kid. He's going to work. He's going to learn. He's going to grow. Um, I'm excited about this kid. I think, I think the sky's the limit for him. They've got Ron Elmstead on the other side. And that solidifies the entire front. So the commissioner is allowed to stay on the ground this time <laughs> by a lineman coming out <laughs> of the green room. This Andrus Peak, Stanford Cardinal. Mike so tells more. Take a peek at Andrus Peak. Coach, here he is in an easy pass throw. And that's the classic stance right there. Has an ability to drop his hips versus a speed rush. I love the way he pushes people by the quarterback, stays inside out. However, he does get too high sometimes, coach. You can see him right here. He's too high. He's not, he's gonna pull back into the quarterback. And again, watch here. Nate Orchard from uh, Utah, who's a heck of a football player, got underneath him, used his hands. So coach, bottom line for me is I love everything about his upside, but I thought there were some inconsistencies in his play. Well, that's the biggest thing you mentioned. The biggest thing for me was, was him getting down. Yep. He's a 6'7 man. He's, he's 300 and whatever pounds. 320 is probably going to play at. But this guy can kick and, and protect the passer. Yep. He can kick and protect the passer. Once he truly learns to play low and, right. and sink into those monstrous lowers, as you saw the other got day. Caps like that. Monstrous yeah. lowers. The speed to power, he's going to be able to handle that. Yeah. Once again, he's 21 years old. This kid's going to grow. With the 14th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Devontae Parker, wide receiver, Louisville. Big-bodied wide receiver, Devontae Parker. The thing I loved about this kid this year is he had a broken foot, came back and only played in six games, but caught 43 passes, averaged 20 yards per catch, and he's one of the best run-after-catch big receivers I've seen in college football. He's a special young man. Love this young man. He's, he's a great kid. Got a chance to talk with him some yesterday. And he can go up and get the football. And that's exactly what the Dolphins need. They got Jarvis Landry. They got uh, Kenny Steele from the Saints. But now they need that big guy that can go up and bring down that football to help Ryan Tannehill. And that's exactly what Devontae Parker can do. Yeah, and Ryan Tannehill had his fifth year option picked up by the Dolphins just today. So those are the moves that the Dolphins made today is picking up Tannehill's fifth year option and then getting him a new weapon to go with Jarvis Landry who had a breakout rookie season last year. The and only they, thing about it. And they added Kenny Stills too. So they've got a, they've got some weapons and Greg now. Jennings. And Jordan Cameron. And Greg Jennings. That tight end as well. Yeah. So, so there's, this should be a big year for the quarterback is what we're saying.
They're doing everything they can to help them. Exactly right. The organization too. You're going to believe in the quarterback, yep. give them some weapons. The San Francisco 49ers and San Diego Chargers, it appears, has struck a <laughs> trade with each other while the Texans are sitting on the clock to complete the first half of the first round of the 2015 draft. We believe, or at least we assume, that the Chargers are moving up two spots to go ahead and get. Well, you can look at this a couple different ways. Number one, Melvin Gordon. Keep in mind who their tailback is right now, it's Brandon Oliver. And if you put Melvin Gordon in there, who reminds me of Jamal Charles, and yes. pair him with Danny Woodhead, now you've got, a, you've got a front guy on first and second down and a great third down change of pace guy at Woodhead. Absolutely, and they were 30th in rushing. Yeah. They, sometimes they don't try to run the football, but I know they want to do that the way they're built. They'll address the offensive line. And one other position of need where they might want to go up and get a Bud Dupre. Keep in mind, Melvin Ingram, former first round pick, can't stay healthy. Jeremiah Tashu, the second round pick, has been up and down a little bit, and Jared Johnson retired. So there's a real need outside as an edge rusher also. And Phillip Rivers is the quarterback there. That was what we were talking about for so much over the last few weeks, just connecting some dots over him not wanting to sign another extension there for the time being because of the uncertain future of their location and Tennessee perhaps wanting somebody of his ilk and San Diego going again. They, None of that happening. Oh, wait. None of it. But they did make a trade. The San Francisco 49ers have traded the 15th pick to the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> With the 15th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers select Melvin Gordon, <laughs> running back, Wisconsin. So not only do we see two running backs taken in the first round, Marshall Falk, we actually see somebody trading up to make that happen. What do you think, 2-8? Talking about this, Rich, if you have the talent, guess what? They are going to come and get you. And lately, the guys that we haven't had guys drafted in the first round, this guy, um, these two guys, I should say, it, they, are, they are awesome. And it, he likens me to Jamal Charles. When, when you look at his ability um, to cut on a dime, uh, doesn't lose any speed, it's effortless. And then he has to break away was speed. The last time? Not only do they look the same in a, in, in a helmet, not only do they wear the same number, but they, 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 they are built the same. I'm telling you, when I watch him run, I feel like I'm watching Jamal Charles week in and week out, and I believe this is a great pick. The Chargers understand what they need at running back. He lights up a room. He's got special talent and ability. He's also bigger than people think at 6'1", 215 pounds. Catches the football well out of the backfield. And when you watch this kid run in tight areas, that's what differentiates him. Start out, here comes counter. Watch him follow the blocks with patience. Let's that lineman get out front, then cuts. Little subtle move back to the outside, untouched. Watch how quick-footed this kid is in the backfield. In the hole, boom, through. He just weaves through, untouched. Stronger than people think also. Arm tackle. Against Minnesota, he won me over. In the fourth quarter, he put that game away. Another, he reminds me a little bit of LaShawn McCoy also. Ability to cut back, make people miss. So, David, when I look at this guy, I already mentioned you pair him with Woodhead. You've got a perfect scenario. But he changes the whole balance of their offense now. Phillip Rivers was everything. He takes the pressure off that. They run the football more efficiently. And Phillip Rivers will get better also. Well, that's a big thing right there. Every quarterback wants a running game. He's tough to bring down. We played yeah. him in the Rose Bowl a couple of years ago. And that fly sweep, usually for those little short, fast guys, they got a big, tall, long guy running the fly sweep. He's running for touchdowns. With the 16th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Kevin Johnson. Yeah. Defensive yeah. back, Wake Forest. Well, they went defense, Mike. So some coaches have told me he's the cleanest defensive back in the draft, meaning he can play press, he can play off. He can play inside, he can play outside. He's a very smart kid, and he's got the twitchy, twitchiest feet in the whole draft. Twitchy feet. Twitchy feet, baby. Let's take a look at this kid playing ball at Wake Forest. Back pedal turn. 
All the defensive back coaches I talked to talked about his feet. Look at that. No wasted motion, plant drive. His feet are so quick, his change of direction follows. He finds the football in the air, he tackles well enough. The only concern is, is his frame and durability, but he made 41 consecutive starts. Zone, eyes on the quarterback. Reads it, plants, interception. Really good football player. Charles and DJ, what do you guys think? Well, Mike, you, you want to build your football team to win your division. And when you look at the Indianapolis Colts and what they have on the outside at T.Y. Hilton, a player that gives them fits, I think Kevin Johnson is just the type of player to match up with him. He doesn't have that elite strength, but he has the quickness to match up with somebody like T.Y. Hilton. I think this is a good pick for the Texans, C.D. And we talk all the time about turnovers, takeaways, making plays on the football. Kevin Johnson doesn't have the big-time frame, but when he sees a play, he triggers and he goes a lot more aggressive than people give him credit for when he's playing the football in the air. I would think either Eric Armstead, the defensive lineman from Oregon, whose upside is amazing, or a wide receiver we mentioned for Shad Perryman. I think they'll wait to get that inside linebacker in the second or third round. And there's the draft party in the spot where this season's going to wind up. Santa Clara, California for Super Bowl 50, the golden anniversary of the Super Bowl. You got to have an impact player. You saw a lot of guys walk out the door of free agency. So a lot of some guys retire, some guys move on, some guys not get re-signed. You're looking for somebody that's going to come in and make an impact. It doesn't matter if it's offense, defense. They got a lot of places where they're young and they're going to need they're going to need something. They're going to need some juice, a pass rusher, uh, one of these guys that may be falling down the board, a receiver, of course, for another yep. young quarterback that they're trying to help to get to get more stable. Uh, he needs more weapons. So this, this pick could go anywhere. And again, uh, the trade particulars. They swap. Uh, that it's a fourth rounder this year and a fifth rounder next year just to move up two spaces in the first round. Just give you an idea of just how expensive it was probably for anybody to attempt to go up to two, no matter from where they were on the draft board, just to move up two spots. With the 17th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Eric Armstead, defensive end, Oregon. Six foot seven, 292 pounds. He's barely 21 years old. His length and his power are both amazing. He's a mammoth five technique. That means a defensive end in a 3-4. He's raw, but has an exciting upside. Take a look at this kid. Sometimes when he plays with leverage and gets under people, he's so heavy-handed, it's unbelievable. I saw him take your guy, Andre's feet, get under him a couple times. I don't even know if he knows what he's doing yet, Coach. <laughs> he, you know, he's so young and he's so inexperienced, but when it looks good, it's a look at that move right there. 292 pounds. Swim move. He, he's a lot like Andrew Speed. When he plays high, he's too high. When he plays low, he's dominant. That's just who he is. When he stays low and drops those hips and explodes, it's special. With the 18th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Marcus Peters, defensive back, Washington. Wow, a little bit of a shocker. Marcus Peters, a young man who was kicked off the University of Washington team back in November. He is the first round pick, the 18th overall, the Kansas City Chiefs. For more on this, we head inside and say good evening to our NFL media insider, Ian Rappaport. Ian, why did the Chiefs go in this direction? Well, Chris, I'm told the Chiefs viewed Marcus Peters as the best, pure, most complete corner on the board. Of course, we knew that he was thrown off the Washington team. And when people, especially on the Chiefs staff, talked to the Washington staff, they crushed him. But he got rave reviews from Steve Sarkeesian staff, which is now at USC, formerly of Washington. The Chiefs relied on that to make sure that, they, that, that Marcus Peters was the kind of guy, Chris, who could fit in on their team. With the 19th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Cameron Irving, guard, Florida State. Still not a receiver. That is really an interesting pick right there. Now, they call him a guard. Remember, Cleveland has Alex Mack at center, but Alex Mack has an ability to get out of his contract at the end of this year. So it's a great insurance pick if they lose Alex Mack.
Florida State Seminoles. He is going to protect one assumes Johnny Manziel when it all starts. Yeah. Later and on what's important ball. too, you know, offensive linemen now when you travel and play, you suit up seven guys. So you have to have guys that are versatile. This guy started yep. at left tackle for half the season. They move him inside the center. He plays real well, and that kind of versatility is going to be important. In every pick and every player under the sun, let's throw in the Liberty Bell, maybe a piece of Independence Hall. If the Sixers want to trade more people to burn salary cap room there. Perryman and Aguilar are both out there still. Here we go. With the 20th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Nelson Aguilar, wide receiver, USC. Nelson Aguilar, ironically enough, is six feet, 198 pounds, and he ran 4-4, the exact same that Jeremy Macklin did at the Combine. He's a precise route runner, added value as a great returner. He reminds me of Jer Jeremy Macklin, ironically, the guy he's replaced. You get a good look at him here, outside receiver, Watch him cross the face of the DB, then a the double move, runs away from the DB. Now they put him in the slot, which I think is part of the intrigue of this kid. He can play anywhere. They kick him inside, off coverage, little hitch. Now finish. You can see the punt return skills there in his open field running. And speaking of punt return, boy, that looks good, doesn't it? Yes. Philadelphia Eagles are going to love him. He'll compliment Matthews, their second round pick from last year, and give Sam Bradford somebody else to throw to him. And I know you were so enamored of that part of our, our coverage of the combine, Mike, is when we took a height, weight, total just measurables and put it in a computer and had a, a comp come out, and it was Macklin. It was Jeremy it was Macklin. Mine. I, it wasn't the computer. It wasn't was yours. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about that. Michael Irvin, your thoughts on Nelson Aguilar? <laughs> hey, I love the pick now, and, I, and I, I liken this kid to a Randall Cobb because, you know, he played a little running back. He can return a punt. He could be a four-down player. I mean, this kid can really light up the football field for you. He goes outside. He goes inside. He can get in the backfield, play on the running back, play defensive back also, and I love that he can return punts. I know a guy like Chip Kelly will get a guy like this, and he will make wonderful things happen on the football field with all of his many skill sets in that offense. For his quarterback, Sam Bradford. With the 21st pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Cedric Abui. Oh, tackle, Texas A&M. I am really happy for the kid. He tore his ACL in the bowl game this year. A lot of people thought that would push him into the second or third round. He's rehabbed. He's a gifted left tackle prospect. Reminds me of the Brickishaw Ferguson. Uh, and we're going to stay in the AFC North with the Pittsburgh Steelers pick being in before we eventually learn the Detroit Lions pick. The Honolulu Blue from nearby Michigan is on the clock right now. As we see another prospect from the Commissioner of Bear Hug. And hold up the jersey. He's really a gifted kid. The only concern I have is not as get a good look at him here on our XO left tackle easy pass pro not even stressed in that pass pro you can tell guys with great feet they don't panic tight end tackle excuse me a TE twist picks it up easily now he's on the right side against a bull rush now I think he's a little bit underpowered at times when he plays high he gets pushed around a little bit and again watch the twist Tackle in, twist, picks it up beautifully. The one issue is a lack of power, and here's what I mean about He's got a back injury, and they have to change his lifting regiment to accommodate the back injury. And you're talking about a guy that's a little bit underpowered. So that's my only concern. It's minor. He's got such great feet and such length. Certainly, if, if yeah. anyone in the back end that, that, that strikes your fancy, what do they do right here? It's got to be a complete defensive makeover. Their offense could be the, one of the best two or three offenses in the football in the NFL next year. So it's all about defense. Who's the best edge rusher like a Bud Dupre versus the number one corner on the board? 
I had him in my mock draft actually taking Byron Jones, the corner from Connecticut, who's still available. Yeah, well, you could see uh, Polamalu's gone, uh, Ike Taylor's gone, Ryan Clark gone. I mean, the, the, their entire secondary needs to be completely retooled. Could it be Landon Collins? Yeah, it could be a safety, and Demarius Randall and Collins are, are great players, and I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if their entire draft is on defense this I year. agree. I yeah. agree. With the 22nd pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Bud Dupree, yep. linebacker, Kentucky. James Harrison is 37 years old. Jarvis Jones was a first-round pick who has not turned into a dominant edge rusher. And as I mentioned, uh, only one trade. The Denver Broncos have just traded up from 28 to 23 with the Lions before we give you the particulars of that trade and start wondering who they're doing that for. Let's talk a little bit more about Dupree and how he might fit in in Pittsburgh. Yeah, height, weight, speed guy. Jumped 42 inches. Had a pretty high production in the SEC. The one thing I didn't like was the lack of consistency. Part of it may have to do with the fact that he played multiple positions on different defenses at Kentucky. One thing for sure, he's explosive, he's big, he's strong, and he fits what Pittsburgh does. I'll tell you what, it's been in, been in this, this division for four years with the Baltimore Ravens. Every draft, these guys get exactly what they want on defense. And after the fact, you look at it and say, yes, I can see it now. A big physical edge rusher that can play the edge in the run and play the edge in the pass. This guy's a perfect fit. He really is. He's a versatile guy. He led his team in sacks and tackles for loss three years in a row. Heck, he played tight end in high school, had 10 touchdowns. The guy's a versatile athlete. Well, he needs a bigger cap, let's be honest here. The Detroit Lions have traded the 23rd pick to the Denver Broncos. With the 23rd pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Shane Ray. <laughs> Defensive end, Missouri. Shane Ray has to be relieved. Six, two and a half, 245 pounds. I thought he had the quickest first step in football. Most of his sacks were generated off the line of scrimmage with quickness. Was not the kind of guy he really was. And by the way, if you're wondering why the Broncos needed to jump up, they believe the Baltimore Ravens would have selected Shane Ray. Instead, they get a compliment to Von Miller. Yeah, Baltimore choosing 26th overall. And uh, again, it was a fifth this year, a fifth next year. And Manny Ramirez, a guard that they traded from that war room to Detroit. He wins off the snap. Quickest first step in football. Bends, flattens, and he wrecks the quarterback, ladies and gentlemen. Watch him again against DJ Humphreys. He wins off the snap. DJ Humphreys is a gifted left tackle, and he beat him around the edge. Speed to power. Starts wide, gets up underneath him, and again, this is DJ Humphreys he's jacking back into the quarterback. And finally, a little twist. Watch his turning radius on this twist. Comes up, under, and go. With the 24th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select DJ Humphreys. Tackle, Florida. <laughs> That's a great fit. Give Kime, Steve Kime, a lot of credit. They signed Jared Belt here in free agency to play left tackle. Now they draft this young man who's got the best feet of any tackle in the draft, I, I think. He can start on the right side, kick to the left, but he's an immediate starter. And keep in mind who the quarterback is. 36-year-old Carson Palmer. When Carson Palmer plays, they're good. He's 13-3 and three in his last 16 starts. Seattle set a tone. San Francisco went the three consecutive championship games. St. Louis is way better than people give him credit for, and they're building something special in the desert. Yeah, Les Snead tells a story when he took the job in St. Louis four years ago. He got a text from somebody saying, congratulations, you're in the NFC West, the easiest division in football, and now look at it. I mean, four years later. With the 25th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Shaq Thompson, Ooh. linebacker, Ooh. Washington. Shaq Thompson, 
somewhat of a surprise. Most people had him in the second or third round. What a great athlete. Six feet, 228 pounds, projected as a will linebacker by most NFL teams. What's his highest and best use? Whether he's a will or a strong safety, I think he's a dime linebacker in sub packages. The big question is if he can cover tight ends, he's got tremendous value. With the 26th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Brashad Perriman, wow. wide receiver, Central Florida. Wow, wow. Now, uh, uh, listen, man, I, 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 I talked about this in the speed that this kid has is in Incredible. I, 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 when I looked at this kid and I talked size and speed, it, it, it reminded me a lot of a guy I watched at the University of Miami, and that was a big beast coming out of the University of Miami at the time. And that's Andre Johnson. <clears throat> Guy's over 6'2", 200 pounds, and can absolutely fly. Brashard Perriman, and when you start talking money downs, I went and looked at all the tape. I grabbed all money downs. No player made more plays on third and fourth down than Rashard Perriman and for UCF. And that's exactly what the Baltimore Ravens will need and get in this, in this young football player right here. I'm so happy for him, so proud of him. A decade in the NFL with the Saints, the Lions, the Chiefs, and the Dolphins as well. Had a 100 catch season when he was up there in Detroit. So yep. he's a guy who could do it. And uh, the only question about this kid, they talk about his consistency with his hands. But Makes great plays, Rich. Make, make, great, great, make great plays, Chris, but then let some easy ones go. With the 27th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Byron Jones, defensive back. Connecticut. The guy that literally jumped out of the gym at the NFL Scouting Combine now makes the leap from Yukon and stores Connecticut down to Arlington, Texas. Mike Mayock, what do you think? I think it fits the need, and I think he's an explosive kid. He's clean off the field. He plays hard. Like most tall corners, he's a little bit stiff, and he's a little bit raw. However, this kid can play corner, free safety. He can be a gunner in special teams. And I think the people in Dallas who need to rebuild the talent of that defense will be excited by this kid. Let's take a look at what Byron Jones brings to the table. We might as well start right here where Rich Eisen said he literally jumped further than any human being ever has in a broad jump. 12 foot three, then he jumped 45 inches. Now you can see a little bit of tightness when he opens up, but that is typical of a tall, lean corner. But he's gifted, he's explosive and he'll help the Cowboys out, out immediately. Package, they can use him right away, but doesn't have to start at corner right away. You know, I thought Rod Marinelli did an unbelievable job with that defense last year. He really did. If you looked at who played for him, with the 28th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Lakin Tomlinson. Oh! Guard, Duke. That's a really interesting pick. Most people had him in the second, some even third round grades. One of my favorite guards in the draft. And you know what that does? That gives them bookend guards. Larry Warford, who played in Kentucky, was a second round pick two years ago. And he's a big, powerful person mover, people mover. I really like this kid. He doesn't have great feet. He's not athletic as some the zone scheme teams, but he is a people mover. Going to put on the Honolulu blue, and let's take a look at his tape right here, Mike. Yeah, you can, you can, he's a finisher. He's a phone booth guy. You can see him at right guard, 77. Good, always takes good leverage and angles. Got a nice low base. There's the drive. And again, is he a quick-footed zone scheme offensive lineman? No. But he's a baller in a phone booth. Well, he's also the second interior lineman they picked up in the first round because they picked up Manny Ramirez as part of the trade to trade back down and select Lake and Tomlinson. I wonder if they want him to play right tackle. He has room to climb up in that pocket, so firming up the middle is huge in this offense. I think that's why this pick makes a lot of sense. So he's the latest Detroit Lion. 
Four more picks to go. Two to be announced. Two to actually be. With the 29th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Philip Dorsett, wide wow. receiver, Miami. Wow. That, I, tell you, I really like that little kid. Indianapolis, Indianapolis. Be he can cold. light up a room. He runs 4 2 5. He's tough. Take a look at him. 4 2 5, 40. Here he is at the Senior Bowl. And you can see how he just accelerates off the line of scrimmage. That corner turned immediately. Double move, slant and go, called a sluggo. Catches the ball easily. He gets in and out of breaks better than people give him credit for. And then when he gets vertical, forget about it. He's tough. Here he is again, Florida State. This is Ronald Darby covering him, who's a very quick corner. He gets him turned, goes to the post. That's rare right there. That's rare. You, you, you tie him with T.Y. Hilton, Kobe Fleener, and, and Dwayne they got from Clemson a couple years ago. You're putting you're putting guys around your quarterback. Yeah. You've yep. got a premier quarterback. You've got a running back now. Yep. You've got guys all over the place. They're taking a the shot. They're trying to win it all. And, I agree. And Dante Moncrief has come on yep. strong there of late. And the last first round wide receiver from the U is now his teammate, Andre Johnson, back in 2003. Philip Dorsett joins him. I'm no doubt proud Hurricane out there. I'm shocked that the coach took them because they have so much speed with T.Y. Hill. Now you put both of these guys together on the outside and let Andre Johnson become the middle man that works the middle of the football field. Well, I tell you what, Andrew Luck has gotten lucky today. And Irv, you got Gore in the backfield. Those two, I mean, this is this is like, this is the U. That's what they have on their helmet is a horseshoe. It's all about the U, I guess, that's, right there. Yeah, that's good. Coach Pagano, he does like that. Look at that. <laughs> With the 30th pick, with the 30, with the 30th pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Demarius Randall, defensive back, Arizona State. He is what today's free safety is all about. 5'11", 196. He ran 445. He is by far the best coverage safety in this draft. But, and you can see him play man to man because Arizona State plays so much pure man coverage. Now you give up a little bit of the physicality. He doesn't tackle as well. The first rounder last year with similar skill set. Here we are at the Senior Bowl. Now watch him change the direction. He can bend, dip, and watch him go. He gets the hand underneath. Covering a tight end. That, that's a joke right there, right? I mean, there's no way a 270-pound tight end is going to beat him. He's got corner cover skills. Gets underneath. Now watch him run the route for the wide receiver. That's a phenomenal job. First-round pick. Green Bay Packers. DJ and Charles, what do you see, man? Mike, he was so versatile at Arizona State. Remember, he was a combination cornerback safety, and they moved him around a lot during his time there. And that ability to play man defense because Todd Graham, their head coach, who also really runs their defense, is so darn aggressive. That allowed Demarius Randall to go ahead and develop. Saw him at the Senior Bowl, liked him a lot then. Didn't think I'd see him in the first round, but that really grew as we got closer. Yeah, one thing as a scout that I love is that baseball background, and that shows up the way he plays the football when it's up in the air. And Mike, you touched on it. Having a safety that can cover man-to-man -man is a huge bonus, and now the Green Bay Packers have two. They had a stud last year in Ha, -Ha Clinton Dix, and now they've got another one to put next to him. With the 31st pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Stephon Anthony, linebacker, Clemson. Welcome to the first round and inside linebacker Stephon Anthony. Mike Mayock, you like this kid a lot. Yeah, I liked him. I thought he was going to be a mid-second round pick. He's six, two and a half. He's a big inside linebacker, the prototype. I think his best football is ahead of him. He's a little more athletic than you expect. I was at his pro day. Yeah. Highly impressed with the way he moved in the pass game. That didn't always show up on tape, but what it tells me is that he's athletic enough to learn how to do it. 
So he'll be a starting inside linebacker immediately. Now, he blew it up at the combine for, for a backer this big, highly athletic. The two inside linebackers were he and Benardrick McKinney that had a lot of size. And look at the movement skills. Wow, look at the movement skills for 250. That's not bad. So we're waiting for the New England, New England Patriots pick to be announced. Uh, and, and with that, the Saints with their two first round picks, the Browns with their two first round picks, the Philadelphia Eagles with a, apparently a desire to try and move up. None of that happened tonight. Phillip Rivers didn't get traded for Marcus Mariota. We didn't see Adrian Peterson traded to the Dallas Cowboys or anybody else tonight. You sound really sad. I am crestfallen, Mike, because what have I done with the last three months of my life now? You know what I mean? Yeah. I spent it so much trying to talk this thing up in this regard. Nothing 32 happened. guys are still going to get drafted, I though. I know. And, and it's they're not good a, football but, players. But in all seriousness, I mean, what to make of the fact that nothing materialized? Is it is it that everybody just sort of liked where they were? Or was it just deemed way too expensive when it was all set? I think Mike mentioned it. There are too many good players available to trade something to move up to get somebody who's kind of in the same category. They're all really good. It's hard to trade your pick when you have good options where you are. And most of the trade talk that we we discussed all week was who's going to trade up to number two to pick the quarterback. Right. And there were the Jets and the Bears right. and the Browns and the Eagles. Yep. Well, when that didn't come to fruition, yeah, forget about the trades for quarterback, right? So now the other ones just fell into place pretty much. If you, if you think the 20th player is about the same as sure. the ninth player, why give up a pick to go get him? Yep. So essentially, it was San Francisco, uh, it was San Diego moving up two spots to get Melvin Gordon because they thought maybe Houston might take him at 16. They moved up in front of him. And then the Broncos moved up five spots to go get Shane Ray because, as Ian Rappaport said, they were concerned the Ravens might select him 26th overall. Yep. And that's it. Yep. Those are your two trades for but, tonight. But the trade that you mentioned first, the one San Diego moved up two spots for the Niners, really, that was a good trade for both people, yes. Mike, yep. because it was a win-win. You've got, you've got the San Diego Chargers going and getting a running back that they really needed and wanted, okay? And I think San Francisco was going to take Eric Armstead okay, anyway. Yes, They wanted I agree. that. I so agree. they add a fifth rounder this year, a fifth rounder next year, and a player. It was a win-win for both organizations. I'm sorry. I, I the Patriots. Even, what do you think the oh, Patriots? Sorry. Yeah, the defending world champion. One thing Patriots. I know about Bill is that I don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about his picks. I don't think I've ever gotten his pick correct. So would you like to suppose? Well, I mean. Oh, forget it. Let's hear it. They're a bait. Oh, How about Malcolm it. Brown? All right, let's check it out. With the 32nd pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Malcolm Brown. Ah, you got it right. Come on. Defensive tackle, Texas. Go figure. That's how you end the night, Mike. That concludes the first round of the 2015 NFL Draft. Thank you for making tonight special. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock Chicago time. Good night, everybody.